The King in Yellow is a real book written by Robert Chambers. This book details a series of stories that connect to a mythical book which shares the same name. Ignalis features many allusions and details from both the real book and the mythical tome. So in today's video we will be talking about those connections and allusions, investigating what it can tell us about the story and the lore of Signalis, as well as investigate just how much the king can help us understand. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. One of the concepts within The King in Yellow is that the characters who read it will find themselves adopting attributes from a character within the text. This can be seen primarily in the Repair of Reputation story, where Hildred Cassinier, a young man in a futuristic New York City, comes across the mythical tome and reads it. Upon reading it, he loses his sanity and ascribes himself onto the role of the heir of the Imperial Dynasty of America. It can also be seen in The Mask, where the main character believes himself akin to the Pallid Mask. In Signalis, there are many examples of characters adopting attributes, knowledge, or even blending with other characters. One such example can be found with Elena, Ariane, and Falk. This trio all recounts being overwritten in some degree by Ariane, with them all over the course of the game slowly turning into the Penrose officer in some way, with Falk stating that Ariane had invaded her mind, and she had lost where she was and where Ariane began and Elena saying that she's slowly losing herself to Arion, and over the course of her notes, details her slowly turning into Arion. Another weaker example can be seen between Elster and Issa. These two seem to exchange memories, as can be seen in the flashback to the school on Rotfront, and seem to be traveling down a very similar path. However, the connection is not as strong as the previous example, and could just be seen as an example of a parallel character. Seeing how the King in Yellow in its canon possesses the ability to distort people into a role within its story, it is very possible that such an occurrence is occurring within Signalis' plot. I Wear No Mask, a quote by Adler right before the final act of the game, is a direct quote from the mythical King in Yellow. It is quoted in the mask as being from Act 1, Scene 2 of the mythical play. The quote is said by the Pallid Mask, a mysterious character also known as the Stranger, who is seen as an emissary, avatar, or the King in Yellow himself depending on interpretations. This character arrives before Casadilla and is asked to unmask, at which point he refuses, stating that he wears no mask. Connecting Adler to this character, we can see multiple connections. The simplest way would be to connect to the fact that he is in fact corrupted at this point and is wearing a physical mask of flesh following his corruption. Him stating he wears no mask would be as to say he rejects that he has accepted to fall into the distortions that took his beloved Falk, instead saying that this is a natural state. This can also be added to say that at this point in the story, as a corrupted individual, he now acts as the king would see fit, seeing as the connection to the stranger would paint him as someone loyal to the king and the distortion meaning he desires what the distortion or king does. This has some pretty large consequences for understanding Adler in the final act, but that isn't here or now. The pallid at mask also holds connection to Alec, who is the protagonist of the mask. If we instead to focus on this connection, we can paint Adler as someone who has succumbed to the insanity caused by the distortions in the king and can begin to draw parallels between their two stories. In the mask, Alec loves Genevieve, however, she instead loves his friend Boris more. However, one day, Alec and Genevieve read from the King in Yellow, on which she declares that she loves Alec, which is completely contrary to her previous statements. And after a short bit longer, the two characters both succumb completely to the madness, and Genevieve leaps into a pool of liquid that turns living beings into marble, a liquid that was produced by studying the King in Yellow. And then Alec falls into a deep grief over the loss of his lover, and after a large passage of time, Alec learns that the marble is thawing, and ultimately is able to reunite with his lover in the end. If we connect this to Adler's story, we can find some similarities, but not many. Adler loves Falk, but she loves Ariane. However, unlike in the story, Falk falls in love with Ariane due to the book rather than in love with him. However, akin to the story, she is ultimately consumed by the mania, and again, contrary, dies in a way, becoming distorted creature that Elster ultimately kills. Seems as though Adler is more akin to the pallid mass than Alec, which sadly spells out tragedy for our little administrator. Up next we have the powers of bioresonance. 
The powers of bioresonance are vast, and seemingly no clear limit is known to them. However, comparing the known powers of this ability to the known powers of the king in its canon, we can find some heavy connections. Bioresonance can influence the mind of others. The king can influence the mind of others as well, either by ascribing characters to them or driving people insane, which has been seen across most of the stories. Bioresonance can be used to telepathically communicate with others. The king in yellow can grant its readers telepathia, which can be shown by Tessie in the yellow sign. Bioresonance can be used to distort reality. The king in yellow, detailed within the play, holds cosmic powers that can cause apocalyptic tier events, of which include distortion of reality. Finally, we have the Calibri's Corrupted Text. This is one of the most blatant calls to the king in yellow, as if one decorrupts the corrupted text stated by the Calibri's, they will get the following quote, which is a reference to the king in yellow. Strange is the night where dark stars rise, and strange moons circling the sky. Songs that the hides should sing, where the king's rags blow, must die unheard. Songs of my soul, my voice is dead. You die, unsung, like tears unshed. This is actually a direct quote from Casadilla's song, which removes the references to Carcassa that would usually be at the bottom of each verse. This heavily connects the distortion of the facility and the Calibris to the king in yellow, which is a massive connection. It also connects the Calibris to Casadil as a helpless bystander connected to the story who is just subject to the king's will and random decisions. A sentiment which is echoed by the no one chose to be here quote, showcasing that everyone within the facility is just a victim to the events that are occurring. But those are all the connections I could find as of this moment. Granted, there may be more hiding in plain view, and if I find them, I'll be sure to bring them up in a future video. I had a lot of fun reading The King in Yellow and its assorted stories, and picking through Signalis and seeing how they can connect. I feel like we, with each passing day that we you know, examine The King in Yellow, are closer and closer to fully understanding this game. But that's all I got for you guys. If you'd like to talk to other Signalis fans about the lore or just in general, I have two discords linked below, my main discord, VSL, and a Signalis discord called Unoff. They are both cool places, and I suggest them both. Lots of cool people in both of them. Finally, once again, thank you to Mr. Skelly for supporting my membership. Your contributions help make this series possible. So with that, this has been Christopher Beast. I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time.